Your love was poured out for me, poured out on Calvary's tree. You bled and died to set me free. You bled and died to save sinners like me. Good evening, everybody. Your old coffin dodger has managed to dodge her way through time since my last podcast until today without encountering any personal coffin with my name on it. And I'm glad to be back here healthy and happy. Today I'm going to let somebody else do the talking, or most of it anyway. It's too hard for me not to talk at all, so I will insert the odd remark in between. A very nice gentleman, his name is Tomás, and I'd be happy to give anyone else. He was brave enough to send me a a USB with his recording on it and I was able to work with it. So that's a great idea. If anybody else would like to put their ideas out there to talk to other people about anything they want to talk about, I'd be very happy to accommodate that. So we'll just get cracking now and keep keep the whole uh, podcast as short as possible. Hi, everybody. I was asked to do a little podcast for a lady known as Coffin Dodger, so I'd like to thank her. I'll just put a few quick thoughts together. These are my thoughts, but I'm not trying to force them on anybody else, but I'll just put them together for you anyway. I'll just talk about kind of what's going on in these extraordinary times. The first thing I'll talk about is I'll talk about the the virus itself, and then I'll talk about a little bit about spirituality. But if I'm a Roman Catholic myself, but if you're a non-believer or whatever, this is still for you. It's not exclusively for Catholics or anything like that, okay? And if you don't believe me, that's fine. Now, I'm a technician myself, electronic technician, probably with years, really. So the first thing I'll talk about is this CVD-19. We all know what it's like at the moment. Just to say, I, I watched, in the last hour, I watched a YouTube video with Steve Bannon in the United States being interviewed by a lady from Fox, Fox News. For anyone who doesn't know who Steve Bannon is, I just checked myself because I wasn't sure. He is a an American media executive, political strategist, and he served at the White House as chief strategist in the administration of US President Trump during the first seven months of Trump's term. So I don't know his uh, credibility or anything else about him. Uh, I just checked for you there. And basically he says the fault for this thing, this horrible thing, lies squarely at the feet of the Chinese Communist Party. Squarely at their feet. He said they bought up millions of respiratory equipment just before they declared it uh, an outbreak so that the rest of the world wouldn't have anything. That's a very interesting aspect. I haven't heard that one yet. To buy up all the equipment and the necessary PPE so that other countries weren't able to to cope with the demand. There were experiments done on... There were experiments done on bats. And strangely enough, uh, there's a laboratory, P4 laboratory, is right next to the market where this thing is supposed to have happened. There was genetic experiments being done on uh, bats and on pigs as well, as far as I know. Interesting that the mention of pigs brings to mind a certain person who is also deeply, deeply embroiled in this horrible scandal. His name is Daf Sorts, maybe. At least that's what one could think. And his his connections to big money of course is is another point as well he bill gates is one of his main donors or one of the who's 
main donors. I don't know how many people are working there at the WHO. Sometimes these things, they they sound huge, as if they're huge organisations, but there could be just two people working there and, and, and pretending to have the reins and the hands for the rest of the world. We do not trust the WHO. And not to be trusted. And Mr Bill Gates is involved with them as well. So I think they're a dirty bunch of degenerates that are up to no good. Everybody loves to attack President Trump. You may hate him yourself. That's fine if you want, if that's your, that's your choice. But he can be very erratic and he can be this, he can be that. Compared to the smooth talking Mr. Obama. But um, Steve Bannon said he acted well. He said the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party, he said, are, should be held accountable. Okay. No, it's very difficult to know if this virus will even be gone in September or even up to Christmas. It's very hard to know and it's a frightening thought actually. If 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 the Chinese government are responsible they Steve Bannon said they're responsible for the deaths of doctors and nurses and elderly. So it's a crime. It's a massive, massive crime that they've carried out. And as they always say, never trust a communist. Just have, take one look at Joseph Stalin and his record and what he did in the Ukraine. Um, I wouldn't trust the, the Chinese the communists as far as I would throw them. Now the um, Chinese people are, are obviously a great, are fine people, but they're living under it under a brutal regime. There are concentration camps with millions of people inside them. This isn't a, a rumor; it's a fact. People have had their organs harvested before they were killed. China's brutal one-child policy. I remember 20, 30 years ago watching a documentary where it was explained what happened with a lot of women when they, when they discovered they were having a second child. Government officials knocked at your door, took the woman away for a forced abortion and it didn't matter how far advanced her pregnancy was. They took that child out of the womb forcefully. I mean, abortion is violence anyway, but I'm, I'm trying to explain about the fact that they, even if the mother wanted to keep the child, they came and took it. has been going on for years. Uh, there was one family in some rural part of China where they happened to have a second child, a new baby, and the baby, the uh, committee, the local commissars or whatever they are, they came out and they uh, forcibly made the family drown the baby in a bucket of water. So that has been going on. It's probably going on in other parts of the world, but it was going on on a massive scale in China. And certainly you may or may not agree with, with Islam and with a lot of Muslim people coming into the country, but in China they are over... Two and a half million, I think the last time I read. Two and a half million in re-education camps. And they have to listen to propaganda from morning to night. Or they swoop into the cities or the villages where the communities have come together. The Muslim communities have come together. And they take away mostly the men, in an effort to re-educate them. That's one part of their brutality. When we were planning this podcast, I asked my interviewee what he thought of 5G technology and if it has any any connection with the current situation. All I understand is that 5G is not a progression of the technology that we knew before that has been used uh, up to 4G. 5G is a total new technology. It's a microwave system and I think Thomas is going to say something about that now No, I'm not a virologist or anything like that but the second thing I'll come on to and I suppose it would be a little bit close to my field of expertise or it would, it would kind of graze past it right, being technical um, this thing about 5G is 5G, has 5G anything to do with coronavirus I cannot say only that 5G is not good for people's health there's an expert on YouTube he talks about it in detail in a calm manner not in a conspiratory manner uh, it has killed cattle in, in parts of the world parts of England and birds fall out of the sky 
It's, it's microwave radiation. It's low power. It has low power output, but it has a high frequency. So the microwave, that's where the, that's where the frequency comes from. Now, you, you, you must realize that their electromagnetic radiation is everywhere around us. It's coming from mobile phones. It's coming from TV. It's coming from police uh, frequencies. It's coming from army frequencies. It's coming from naval. It's coming from everywhere. And it's all passing through our bodies in, at a certain stage. Now, if you want to know, if you want to hear what electromagnetic radiation sounds like, the next time you're driving, especially in the country, switch your radio to a medium wave and find a blank station. Just find a station that has just a bit of hiss in it. And as you drive along the road, if you pass underneath mains electricity cables, you'll hear you'll hear the hissing and the crackling. That's radiation. That's the radiation being generated from the electricity from the 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 two hundred or ten thousand volt electricity uh, cables. Especially if you go under those massive uh, pylons, you'll really hear it. Then you know. So I cannot say is. 5G causing coronavirus, did it cause it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. There are videos and audios out there claiming that it is. But there's an interesting thing I'll read for you in a second. I found it on Facebook on a Facebook comment. And it's about Elon Musk and about all these satellites he's putting up into space. Uh, he, I think the, he intends putting up 30,000 so there'll be complete coverage. Um, there's a video, if you go to YouTube and then you get the video it's called Starlink Starlink and you can actually see these train of 60 satellites passing over passing over Holland is it Interlink or Starlink I think it's Starlink and you'll see it there okay and you'll see these satellites passing over yes it's absolutely astounding how many satellites are orbiting the earth and how many different interests have satellites out there. And I will attach a link that it's a kind of an interactive link as well, where you can follow who has what satellite orbiting the Earth out there in space. And um, there's a comment I came across in YouTube. Oh, sorry, yes, uh, Facebook, Facebook, sorry, about the same thing, right? about the amount of satellites that he does uh, intend to put up there. So I'm just going to read it for you. It says, Yes, 60,000 satellites were planned to be launched from Cape Canaveral under Elon Musk. I know an aerospace engineer that said each one of these satellites can be turned into a direct energy weapon. It would have a ray the size of a human being down to the earth as a direct energy weapon. This is from a scientist who works with the phase array 5G technology in the space industry. So... That's interesting, okay. But again, as I said, I'm not an expert, so there's a lot of um, stuff out there at the moment. Of course, we cannot be experts in every area of life. We can only be more or less expert at the area we work in and that we studied and that we are very, very interested in. But we can help each other to understand um, different things uh, because when we meet on social media and on different platforms we can share information we can help to complete a picture that maybe we have started and haven't been able to finish so if each person it gives a little bit of that information that they have then we can see the bigger picture so to speak I just talk a little bit about spiritual matters now, okay? You nearly have to apologise these days when you mention uh, spiritual matters. But that's where Thomas and I kind of get along really well. Because for me, in the whole person health area of work, I always look at the physical, the mental and the spiritual. Because that makes up the whole person. These are the three areas that need to be in balance with one another because when one is out of sync, the other two suffer as well. So we'll let Thomas tell us something here now. I'm a Catholic myself, but if you were a non-Catholic or it doesn't matter what you are, just don't zone out, just have a listen. And it could be important, you know. So there's a website that you should go to. Um, it's called Countdown to the Kingdom. It's a website uh, that contains writings and prophecies of mystics of the church that have been approved. And one of the people that, that it's written about in there is Father Michel Rodriguez from Quebec in Canada. He's a priest. He died 
uh, he went to heaven and met God the Father, met the Holy Family and all that. He was sent back with a mission to train priests for the era of peace that's coming. That's just to remind you that there is an era of peace coming. It's a wonderful era of coming. So, But we have a few road bumps on the way first that we have to get over, okay? Now he said several things, this priest. He said, the new world order is real, the Masons are real, the Illuminati are real, the one world army is in place, and the one world government is almost ready. There was to be a war, world war, in 2019, but through prayer it was diverted. But no, it cannot be stopped. He also said there was an attempt on the life of Donald Trump, but it was kept quiet, but there will be another attempt. So he said people should pray for President Trump. Because he's the one at the moment that's stopping this new world order. They hate him. They absolutely hate him. They cannot figure him out because, as God said, he's jumping from one foot to the other. He's disrupting their plans in a major way. So they want him out of the way. They don't like him. They want him out of the way. He said a few more things again, if I can just think of them. They're all there for you to read. Go to countdowntothekingdom.com. Everything is there for you to read. Father Michel Rodriguez, what I just quoted. Now, there's another website that I would highly recommend. He's a Catholic writer. I've been reading his writings probably close on for 10 or 15 years. And it's Mark Mallet. So if you, go, if you Google the, uh, the no word, Mark Mallet, just Google that. He's practically, you know, before he's put up a writing maybe once a week, he's putting them up almost every day now. And they're very powerful and they're very inspiring. And there's stuff going back there, years, going back to this article, it's going back years upon years. Now, there is one thing that Father Rodriguez has mentioned, and as far as I know, it's in the book of Revelation, uh, about the warning. The warning or the illumination of conscience, which is coming. It's not in the, in the far distance. It's close. It's very close. But everybody will be, no matter what religion or none, will be able to see, will be able to get a look at their own soul and where they stand before God. Some people will die of fright, but it's... it's, it's it's a great gift for humanity to be able to turn around and decide, decide, decide for God. He got what Father Michel said there will be six weeks after the warning where Satan will not be allowed to interfere in human affairs. So people can decide. There's no on the ditch. There's no any more standing on the ditch. You either choose the, for the good guys or you choose the other guy because he's very close. And he's, a, he's very active at the moment, but he's also, Satan is very active because... He's trying to do his damnedest. He knows his time is short. So he will be un- he'll be released after six weeks and then he will be able to influence people. And it will be very, very hard for people to choose the right course after that unless, unless they have decided as it is. Not everybody will choose go- will good or the good side. Not everybody will. Some people sadly will choose Satan and they will, they will choose him. There's so much more information there. I'm not going to go into it now because... I would only it's all there for you countdowntothekingdom.com or Queen of Peace Media is where they have the book I read it and it's a fantastic book it's not a, it's not a depressing it's not it's not a depressing book The what about the warning and the illumination of conscience it's very good now I want to make very clear this is not the end of the world it's the end of an era it's the end of an era and we are heading into the era of peace which is fantastic so I don't want to leave you with negativity or just trust in God, and doesn't matter what religion you are. You listening to me now? You may, you may be Catholic, you may be nothing, you may be, you may, you, whatever. Doesn't matter. This thing is going to affect you as well as everybody else. So look, I leave you with that, and thank you very much for listening. Indeed, I think that's the safest thing we can do, is to trust in God. Because everything else we have put our trust in, in our lifetimes, has proven to be very shaky. We have put our trust in humans, in governments, in insurances, in material possessions, in our own intellect, in our ability to change things to be to influence people but at the end of the day we are mere humans we're just human we're only a drop in the ocean in the ocean of time in the ocean of eternity so it is a war it is a silent war it is a war on our minds on our spirituality 
Who is our father? Who do we belong to? Who do we listen to more? And they say, and I said it before one time, uh, when Jesus was brought into the desert, well, he was in the desert, but he was tempted by the devil three times. And the modern interpretation of the three temptations were hedonism, egoism, and materialism. So these are the three things that we see dominate society in a large scale. Hedonism, of course, is about satisfying your basic instincts all of the time. Egoism is putting yourself in the center of everything. The world revolves around you and everybody has to react and has to serve you. And materialism, of course, it it speaks for itself. That's the easiest to understand is that you have maybe put your trust in what you own, what you have in the bank, (laughs) what size of a house you have, whether it's paid or not paid for. But it is very shaky. When you are faced with situations like, like we're faced with right now, Owning a house is really totally irrelevant. And it's a little virus <laughs> that's causing all this. I remember I said before one time as well that, um, I think it was the Dalai Lama, he said something that was really funny, but is so true when you think about it. He said, if you think you are too small to make a difference in the world, if you're too insignificant, if you're too humble to make a difference in the world just look at what a mosquito can do a mosquito can make your life hell so on that note i will say thank you to my interviewee and that was thomas or tomas and and i leave it at that for now i'm going to do another podcast straight away because i'm looking at the life and the origins of president trump so I want to get get that done as well and get started on that. Look after yourselves and look out for one another. Your love was poured out for me. Poured out on Calvary's tree. You bled and died to set me free. You bled and died to save sinners like me. Your love was poured out for me. Your love was poured out for me on the tree at Calvary. Your love, your love was poured out for me. I can only, only imagine what pain you must have felt at the hands of the barbaric sinner. Oh, but you died for them, and you died for sinners like me. Oh, you bled and died for sinners like me. You bore our cross on Calvary's tree. You bled and died for sinners like me. Oh, your love, your love has set me free. Oh, your love, never-ending love, comes down from the God above. Oh, your love, it set me free. Oh, thank God that you died for sinners like me. Oh, you died for sinners like me.
things like me Bearing the weight of the world at Calvary When you die, you bore our cross away On that old rugged cross that day For sinners like me You came To set this old sinner man free Oh, you bled and died For sinners like me